The shifting balance of power in the Middle East as the death of a prominent Saudi journalist damaged the U.S.-Saudi relationship. Will international outrage diminish Saudi Arabia's influence in the Middle East? And we'll examine the impact of the Saudi crisis on past and present conflicts. Welcome to Plugged In. I'm Jim Malone filling in for Greta Van Susteren. On today's show, the delicate balancing act of power in the Middle East and the fallout from the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. VOA has an exclusive interview with the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on the importance of Saudi Arabia as a key U.S. ally and one of the major players in the Middle East. We will also get insight from former Ambassador Gerald Feierstein, who's had extensive diplomatic experience in the region with nine overseas postings, including in Saudi Arabia. And we also have a full complement of VOA correspondents who've been covering this issue from the very start. We are live on Facebook at Voice of America, and we want your comments and questions. The United States is taking steps to revoke the visas of Saudi nationals implicated in the killing of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi at a Saudi consulate in Turkey earlier this month. But amid the growing international outrage, some say the punishment does not go far enough. But there are bigger worries for regional officials who see trouble and instability ahead if the killing of the Saudi journalist undermines relations between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. VOA diplomatic correspondent Cindy Sain reports from the State Department. The killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi three weeks ago is still dominating political events in Washington. President Donald Trump was asked how something like this could have happened in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. We had a very bad original concept. It was carried out poorly, and the cover-up was one of the worst in the history of cover-ups. It's very simple. Bad deal, should have never been thought of. Somebody really messed up, and they had the worst cover-up. After meeting with Saudi leaders last week, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo told reporters the U.S. is already taking action based on the facts it has available at this point. We have identified at least some of the individuals responsible, including those in the intelligence services, the royal court, the foreign ministry, and other Saudi ministries who we suspect to have been involved in Mr. Khashoggi's death. We are taking appropriate actions, which include revoking visas, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan dismissed Saudi claims that rogue agents were responsible for the killing in a speech to parliament. Blaming some intelligence members for this matter will satisfy neither us nor the international community. The conscience of humanity will only be satisfied once everybody is called into account, from those who gave the orders to those who carried them out. Erdogan did not mention reports of an audio tape of the actual killing. Some experts say Erdogan may want to use the information he has as leverage. At the very least, the Turks want something. And if they get what they want, there will never have been an audio, there will never have been a video, there will never have been pictures of visas. Other experts say Erdogan not only wants to be a major player on the global political stage, but is also vying with Saudi Arabia to be the leader of the Islamic world. And Saudi Arabia, traditionally, because of the uh, holy sites in Saudi Arabia, has traditionally been regarded or has regarded itself as uh, the uh, leader of uh, the Islamic world. So you could argue that there is a, a little bit of uh, competition uh, that is in the background of what is unfolding. Amid the ongoing worldwide outcry into the killing, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman received a warm welcome at an investment conference in Riyadh Tuesday, although many top business and political leaders decided not to attend. Cindy Sain, VOA News, the State Department. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo traveled to Riyadh last week for an explanation from Saudi officials and the Crown Prince 
about what exactly happened to Jamal Khashoggi at the Saudi consulate in Turkey, October 2nd, the last time the Washington Post columnist was seen alive. The secretary then flew to Ankara for a briefing by Turkish intelligence officials who were the first to claim that Khashoggi had been tortured and killed. VOA contributor Greta Van Susteren had an opportunity to speak exclusively with the Secretary of State in Mexico. Now, Mr. Pompeo was reluctant to speak on the specifics of the case, but he did talk to us about the importance of U.S.-Saudi relations. They have been a strategic ally of ours since the early 1930s and recently have been even more important. Uh, they've assisted us in uh, pushing back against the world largest state sponsor of terror, the Islamic Republic of Iran. They've been a great counterterrorism partner during our administration. We have economic ties with them that are deep and important, a broad spectrum of strategic relationships between the United States and Saudi Arabia. If, if the investigation turns out and that the investigation is ongoing, that the um, crown prince or the king or had deeper involvement that's being suspected or people are saying in the media, um, that it's determined to be that. What can the United States do or what should it do in light of the fact of its strategic importance? Well, the president has said that it, um, there'll have to be some response in the event that the facts turn out the way that you hypothesize that they will uh, turn out. Uh, I'm not going to get into what those responses might be. We'll certainly consider a wide range of potential responses. But I think the important thing to do is that the facts come out when I traveled to Saudi Arabia, I met with the king, I met with the crown prince at great length, I met with Foreign Minister Joubert, and I made very clear to them that the United States takes this matter very seriously, that we don't approve of extrajudicial killings, that we don't approve of that, of that kind of activity, that it is, it's not something consistent with American values, and that it is their responsibility, as this incident happened in their consulate, is their responsibility to get to the bottom of this, to put the facts out clearly, accurately, completely, transparently, in a way that the whole world could see. And once we've identified the fact set, then they have the responsibility in the first instance to hold accountable those inside the country that may have been involved in any wrongdoing. All right, Turkey's been at odds with Saudi Arabia. This certainly has put them at greater odds um, in light of what's happened. What's the strategic importance of Turkey to the United States? So my second stop this week was in Ankara. <laughs> I met with President Erdogan and uh, my counterpart, uh, Mevlut Cavusoglu. Uh, we have deep relationships. They're a NATO ally. Uh, we have had challenges with them. They uh, had held Pastor Brunson. They still continue to detain uh, three locally employed uh, people who were at our, at our embassy there. Uh, so there are still many challenges in this relationship, but they sat at an incredibly important place, and they always will, uh, the bridge between Europe and uh, the Middle East. And as a member of NATO, we need to work to continue to improve that relationship so that we can work together to achieve the ends of NATO and ends the, in places where Turkey and the United States have overlapping interests, including the challenges that are in Syria today. I think there are real places where we can work with Turkey in Syria to get better outcomes for the Syrian people. For more on the international reaction and the potential impact it might have on U.S. policy towards Saudi Arabia and the Crown Prince, we're joined in studio now by VOA State Department correspondent Cindy Sane and our colleague on Capitol Hill, our Senate correspondent Michael Bowman. Welcome to both of you. Cindy, let me start with you. Uh, what kind of um, responses has the administration given along now for several days? And in the piece you did, there was a very strong comment from President Trump about what he described as a cover-up on the part of the Saudis. Yes, many were surprised by that comment, Jim, because the administration has overall taken a very cautious approach and has said, let's wait until we get the facts, let's wait until we have a real explanation. And in some ways that they're still saying that, they have sent the uh, CIA director, Gina Haspel, over. She's to be coming back shortly. Uh, there's different reports on what she may or may not have seen, how much of the intelligence that she's seen. But the administration has been cautious, and the president has said several times that he does not want to stop U.S. arms sales to Saudi Arabia, saying that it creates thousands and thousands of jobs in the U.S. So he's been cautious on that. Although in his latest comments, uh, a lot of observers have been looking at who ordered the killing? And is it, does it go all the way up to the young crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman? And in his latest comments, the president said, well, 
the crown prince does seem to run everything over there. Perhaps he was responsible. So that's the furthest he's gone. He's saying that he hopes he's not responsible, but the U.S. has said that uh, the facts will come out and they'll get to the bottom of it. Well, of course, we uh, have members of Congress uh, who are going to be key players in this, but there's been a great deal of debate in the Congress over the U.S.-Saudi relationship moving forward and specifically uh, how the U.S. should handle its relationship. Let's get a sampling of a couple of lawmakers about their reactions to the Saudi situation. I think this ought to be a relationship-altering event uh, for the U.S. and Saudi Arabia that we ought to suspend military sales, we ought to suspend certain security assistance, uh, and we ought to impose sanctions on any of those that were directly involved in this murder. But we do have a relationship with Saudi Arabia that we should try to maintain, because the Saudis do provide very effective intelligence. They are a, uh, a, a bulwark against Iran, and they happen to work closely with Israel. You put all that together, uh, we have to try to balance it. The world is not that simple. So uh, let me turn now to our uh, Senate colleague, Michael Bowman. I mean, a little bit of a sense there of this outrage on Capitol Hill about what's going on, but also this sort of realism creeping in about the intertwined nature of our relations with Saudi Arabia. Uh, what is your sense of, of the reaction so far? Well, right now, Jim, congressional revulsion over Saudi Arabia is pervasive. Uh, it's bipartisan, and it really predates uh, the killing of this journalist. Uh, the Saudi uh, air campaign over Yemen has been a major irritant. Uh, in fact, there was a resolution in the Senate that was beat back, that was defeated, to end the United States air support uh, for refueling Saudi warplanes. Um, but a Democratic uh, member of the, Senate, of, of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee told me, look, the killing of a journalist is horrible, but let's not forget that thousands and thousands of Yemenis have died as a result of this air campaign. Um, what could happen? Uh, well, already uh, the Senate has invoked the Global Magnitsky Act, and that would compel uh, the Trump administration to sanction those individuals found responsible uh, for the death of the journalist. Uh, I already mentioned possible action on as far as the uh, refueling of, of Saudi planes. That could come up again, and I suspect that it would have a greater likelihood of passage. And then you have the arms sale to Saudi mm -hmm. Arabia. Um, arms sales typically go forward unless Congress intervenes to block them. Uh, I don't think that there's a huge amount of appetite among the Democrats uh, for this arms sale right now. Among Republicans, as we saw in the clip, uh, there is revulsion, uh, but there is also a reluctance to get out in front of President Trump and, and out in front of the administration. And you do hear those who say that the last thing that we want to do is risk opening the door to Iranian hegemony in the Middle East. Cindy, uh, where do we see the administration uh, looking now? I mean, we, we've heard the comments from Secretary Pompeo, from the president. What are they going to be assessing as we go forward in terms of the investigation? Are they going to be listening to what the Turks have? Are they going to be waiting for what the Saudis conclude? Right, Jim. Well, Secretary Pompeo made very clear that the U.S. will draw its own conclusions. He said we're waiting to, to get information, as you say, from the Turks and from the Saudis. But he said we have our own intelligence on the ground. And he said uh, whether we believe or not the sort of the, the shifting explanations that the Saudis have presented on what happened to Khashoggi. Uh, he said the U.S. Will, will definitely draw its own conclusions. So that's kind of what people are waiting for now. And it would seem also that Turkish President Erdogan is playing a very key role as he has sort of in drips uh, sent out information, a uh, very damning information about the the premeditated, and it looks like a meticulously planned crime. So it, uh, Erdogan seems to be playing a key role in this as well. 
Mike, in the half minute or so we have left, I mean, do you think eventually it could lead to actual congressional action, say, to block an arms sale? Uh, or are, are the relations with Saudi so important that the likelihood of that perhaps will fade over time? I suspect that any ultimate action will be measured. And that would be true even if Democrats were running Washington, uh, given the historical nature of the U.S.-Saudi relationship. However, whatever Saudi Arabia does now could have an impact. And let's just state the obvious that their crisis crisis management so far has not been ideal. Well, Michael Bowman, Cindy Sain, thanks very much for joining us here on Plugged In. The killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi has sparked condemnation around the world, and the ripple effects are likely to be consequential for Saudi Arabia throughout the Middle East and beyond. Long one of the world's top oil producers, the Saudis are seen by the West as a bulwark against Iranian influence in the region especially on the ongoing conflicts in the region, including in Yemen, Syria, and Iraq. VOA's Mil R. Sega has more on that. From the gleaming towers of Riyadh to the sheer volume of its oil exports, Saudi Arabia is a major strategic player in the Middle East. But behind the glitter, beyond the wealth, Saudi Arabia is engaged in a deadly proxy war with Iran, a war that has played out in bloody conflicts in Yemen, Syria, and Iraq. And now the fallout from Jamal Khashoggi's death threatens the delicate balance between these two countries, tarnishing Saudi Arabia's image and its internal moves towards reform. Khashoggi, who wrote columns for the Washington Post, had been critical of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The Saudis claim he died after an altercation in the Saudi consulate in Turkey. But much of the world remains skeptical says former U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. If it is established that somehow uh, either the crown prince or somebody at a very high level was involved in ordering this, uh, this murder, uh, I think that's going to further weaken his position in Saudi Arabia. The crown prince, once seen as a reformer, has fallen under increased scrutiny. His reputation severely damaged, according to Turkish analyst Serhat Güvenç. Mohammed bin Salman's image as a potential reformer has gone down the drain. So drain. Therefore, he is not going to be able to sell this soft power aspect of uh, his uh, his personality. More broadly, Khashoggi's death highlights the risks of speaking out against governments in the Middle East, says Washington Post editor Fred Hyatt. You know, he was no enemy of Saudi Arabia. Uh, he wasn't anybody's enemy. He was a journalist doing his job, trying to, you know, spark open debate about important issues. He was a patriot. Khashoggi's killing also brings a sharp focus on Saudi Arabia's relations with the United States, a close economic bond that goes back decades. Former U.S. Ambassador James Smith. And in my time there, we could have conversations about women's rights, human rights, uh, uh, the public space. And none of that is going on now because it is a transactional relationship focused mainly about money. The United States and other nations have long questioned Saudi Arabia's handling of internal dissent. But concerns over human rights have always been balanced by the importance of Saudi oil and its role as a counterpoint to Iran. Khashoggi's death is bound to spark wider discussion, says expert Robin Wright. This puts on the table all those issues that the West has opted to ignore for decades, and not just in Saudi Arabia, but across the region. But as we learn new details about Khashoggi's death, many are asking deeper questions about the future of Saudi Arabia's influence in the Middle East and beyond. Milar Sega, VOA News. So what can we expect moving forward? We had the opportunity to speak with Ambassador Gerald Firestein, now Director for Government Relations and Policy at the Middle East Institute. He was former U.S. Ambassador to Yemen under President Obama. Prior to that, he served as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Near East Affairs. As a diplomat, he served in nine overseas postings, including in Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Oman, Lebanon, Jerusalem, and Tunisia. I asked Ambassador Firestein for his assessment on the fallout from the Khashoggi incident, its impact on Saudi influence in the region, and what it means for the United States.
it, it's a difficult moment because uh, I would I would say that it's probably the most serious uh, problem, uh, most serious uh, crisis between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia since 2001, the the 9/11 uh, attacks, uh, because it raises fundamental questions about the nature of the leadership in in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I, in my view, um, the problem is not so much a U.S. Saudi problem as it is a uh, Mohammed bin Salman problem. The question is, you know, is he somebody who is a credible partner for the United States going forward? Saudi Arabia is such a, an important regional power. You mentioned some of the uh, engagements mm -hmm. that it's critical in Israel-Palestinian, for example, possibility of peace, uh, also is a bulwark against Iran. I mean, do you see any of this being affected by the aftermath of this incident? Well, I, I think that the administration is is certainly hoping that uh, that they will be able to work through these issues and preserve these important elements of the relationship and the important cooperation that exists between the two uh, between the two countries. The issue is what the attitudes are going to be in Congress and uh, in the broader public. Uh, and we've seen over these last few weeks, a number of very senior uh, uh, members of Congress, uh, uh, bipartisan, including you know, Bob Corker, the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, uh, Lindsey Graham, a very uh, senior member of the Republican caucus, Rand Paul and others, uh, who have been extremely critical of uh, the relationship uh, and of the Trump administration's management uh, of uh, the relationship and have demanded that the United States take firm action uh, to confront uh, the Saudis over, over uh, the, the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. What about more broadly the international community at large, how they will view Saudi Arabia now? along a mecca for business, for oil production, and so forth. But how does the balance with human rights and respecting dissent within Saudi Arabia, how does this all factor in now to how the rest of the world will view what's going on there? Well, again, it's a, it's a very good question. We've seen some of the uh, reaction. The Germans have announced that they're going to cut off uh, their arms sales. Uh, they're urging uh, their EU partners to do the same. Uh, the, uh, the core relationships for the Saudis um, on the security side are the United States, uh, the United Kingdom, and France. Uh, and so far, those three countries have not suggested or indicated that they intend to follow the German lead on, on that issue. And, and, and you make the, the important point, which is that as long as there's an interest in maintaining uh, the stability of global energy markets, Saudi Arabia is going to continue to play a very important role. Uh, if you take uh, the Saudi production off of the market, uh, then uh, it's going to be a major energy and therefore a major economic crisis for the world. So one way or the other, I think Saudi Arabia is going to be an important player in the international uh, uh, arena. They're going to continue to be a major partner, especially on, on these energy issues. Uh, and uh, the world is going to have to figure out what the relationship is between the positives uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia and those negative elements that you mentioned. For the big picture on the developing crisis in Saudi Arabia and how events there might impact countries in the region, we are joined by VOA's Middle East and North Africa correspondent Heather Murdoch. Thanks for joining us. Great to have you in Washington. We can take advantage of that today. You met Jamal Khashoggi um, some time back. Tell yes. me about that. Um, I met him at the beginning of 2016. And if you recall at the time, there was a major diplomatic crisis between Saudi Arabia and Iran. So I traveled to Saudi Arabia to cover the crisis. And I met with him um, in an interview. Um, he was very influential inside Saudi Arabia at the time as a journalist and as a speaker, but he was also influent, uh, influential in how we saw Saudi Arabia because he would speak with journalists very readily and was very outspoken, not always critical of the government, but always um, would speak his mind. 
What I've noticed uh, in the last day or so, we've had this big conference going on in Riyadh, uh, investment conference, and we saw the crown prince uh, make an appearance there. He got an ovation. Um, it, it struck me as though the Saudis definitely trying to project an image of trying to carry on business as usual. Yes, very much so. In fact, the, uh, the Saudi press yesterday was all over um, pictures of the Crown Prince meeting with Khashoggi's son. And the headlines were um, that they were calling for an investigation and that they were uh, con consoling the family. Um, and that the investment conference is going on. There was a headline this morning saying that all the top hotels were filled. Wow. Uh, the, the importance of Saudi Arabia as a linchpin in the region, people are going to be looking this now more than ever because of this focus on the crown prince, what happened to the Saudi journalist. I mean, how do you see this at the moment, the fallout in the region? Well, uh, I think what's going to be interesting is how this impacts Saudi Arabia's relationship with Iran. Saudi Arabia and Iran are the two strongest powers in the region at the moment. And they are arch enemies. And right now, um, they are uh, vying for power in Yemen and in Syria. And so I will be interested to find out how Iran re reacts to it. At the moment, Iran is saying the US is involved and that the prince has blood on his hands. I mean, do you see, uh, from that comment, it sounds like you might expect the Iranians are going to try to exploit this uh, for some sort of political gain. Sure, I think they will as much as they can. Right. And what about the role of Turkey in all this, though? This is interesting, isn't it? Is it is interesting, but I'm not quite sure exactly what Turkey wants. I mean, Turkey has laid out this uh, evidence bit by bit. So they must have known more from the beginning. But slowly, they've been showing us what happened and how this crime supposedly took place. Um, it has elevated Turkey's position in the region. It has possibly posed Turkey and Iran on the same side of a conflict. And it has definitely created a split between Saudi Arabia and, Iran, and Turkey. Sorry. As you look at the region and you travel around the region a great deal, what, what do you think countries in the region are going to be looking for now as this situation sifts through over the next weeks and months? I think they'll be especially looking at the U.S. and Saudi relationship and how that falls out. Um, I think they'll also be looking at the crown prince himself and if his power will remain consolidated. Mm. So the U.S., though, is still seen because of its relationship with Saudi Arabia as a very key player and how they respond to this will be important. Yes, it will be very important. Well, Heather Murdoch, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And we wish you all luck as you return to your beat eventually in the Middle East. Thanks, Thanks. so much. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Stay plugged in by liking us on Facebook at Voice of America. You can also like Greta's Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Greta. And follow Greta on Twitter at Greta. Thanks for being plugged in. And we leave you now with some images of the long-lasting U.S.-Saudi relationship over the years.